Varsity Club, welcome back to another classic. Our recruiting class just keeps getting better and better. And yes, we're not averaging, you know, the five stars and the four stars, but still, these are good players. Jeremy Willis is the latest one that we've ended up getting. And if you look at see from his scouting tape, ultimately, he's got good speed, really good acceleration. His tackle, hit power, pursuit is really high, play wreck. I think this guy is more than likely going to be playing on defense, despite having some things that could possibly work on offense. I feel like defense is ultimately this guy's calling. And while we peaked in the top five earlier, we're sitting in the top 10 still, which is good in my opinion. Again, number eight. Uh, class in the nation notre dame texas a m minnesota lsu are sort of your top teams but we're not that far behind them this week though we have a massively important game against nebraska and it's gonna be a tough one now, nebraska is overall rating wise a much better team but coaching wise we have a much better coach our coach has been getting things done but we're gonna need a big game plan today now looking at nebraska schedule they had sort of an upset against wyoming but wyoming's been pretty good this year uh and then they ultimately lost to wisconsin who we beat which is obviously great news and they lost to northwestern who we also beat albeit a close one this team is gonna be very evenly matched with what we have so get ready for a close one and again from a top 25 standpoint you can see that miami jumped from number three to number one michigan ended up winning against indiana but again they were number one last week number two this week with miami beating georgia tech that gave them what they needed to ultimately surpass them and if you look for where we're at well we got to scroll a little bit and not much has really changed we're sitting at the same spot we were last week 18th found ourselves out here in lincoln nebraska playing in one of the biggest stadiums that we've honestly ever played this is a massive stadium with a team that is inching and itching to get back in that top 25 and where what stands in front of them john mcconnell knows he's been in big situations like this before he can absolutely battle back and be just fine nice little comeback route is nearly taken in the house but not by us down here in third and nine mcconnell hits him with the play action he's got a guy throws one and that one's gonna be picked off the pressure was there the offensive line couldn't protect that man at all he comes out of the play action read they're right in his backfield he breaks a tackle, but unfortunately, just throws it where two guys are. You're on the road. You got a tough game. You got a really tough defense in Nebraska. We've got to figure things out here. We're going to try to get a stop here. Walters is going to get him after three. Now, something to note is that Nebraska is actually down their top uh, running back. They do have a pretty good backup running back. Their starting quarterback obviously is still there, but the guy they were going to dominate today with is no longer there. But I don't know if it matters the way they're absolutely shredding us right now. And Smothers is going to have Randall move over in a little bit. Watching the cross routes to go for the underneath route. We got Bash and Kirk there who gets absolutely destroyed, but we stop him after eight still. We want to obviously sit on the passing plays, but Nebraska typically runs in more and they pass it. So we got to watch out for those. Looks like a read option here. Eichenberg though sees it the entire way and drops him for a loss of two. It's an absolutely fantastic stop and we needed that one right there. Love to see what our guys are able to do. A little bit of pressure on the table. Third and three, the halfback stays in the block. We bring some pressure. We got John Hall there who gets absolutely mauled. Someone called Randy Moss. We got a new, you got Moss segment. We've had our issues with John Hall, and well, that just absolutely personifies our issues with him. Sometimes he makes fantastic plays. He's second on our team in interceptions this year, but man just can't get it done. And because he gave up that big play on third down, Nebraska capitalizes, and well, here we are, down seven. If we're going to beat Nebraska today, we cannot have bad interceptions like we had before. And again, I'll put part of the blame on the offensive line because they really didn't help out John McConnell at all, but we need our running game and our passing game to be flawless today. Today's game plan is really built around take what they ultimately give you. We got to get our guys to calm down a little bit. Connell's got to figure things out. And right now, he's doing his best, but we need more. And a rough start from McConnell out there, throwing the first interception of the game on that first drive that had a little bit of promise. But back out here trying to make something happen. McConnell's going to pick up looks to be about four or five. Second and six yards to go. Derwin in the backfield with McConnell. Play action fake. McConnell, again, never really feels quite at home because these guys are constantly getting some pressure on him, but he gets six in the first. And again, we can't rely on him running too much. As you all pretty much well know, the reason we cannot rely on McConnell running too much is because at some point we know he's going to be made of glass and he is going to break and we cannot risk having that dude not on the field for us. We need him on the field as much as humanly possible. And that's every play. So far, so good, though, for Derby. He's had a couple of good plays. Some they've had a really block for him, but when they have blocked for him, I mean, the man's been a monster. And speaking of a good play there, look at him go for 11 up the middle. I mean, real talk, you have that guy blocked for, it's going to be tough. We need Jason Barr to have a major game, too. Barr trying to find some slots in the backfield. Nearly broke out to the outside, but they stopped him after three. If we are seeing anything right now, though, it's said they're not really doing a good job stopping the run. So something to keep note of. If we can keep that going. Derwin getting the ball here, looking to move forward. Look at the young fella. It's either the senior, the old fella, get almost all the way to the first down. It's McConnell's first complete pass today. He's one for three with the interception today. 
not the stat line we were hoping to see from a guy that we thought should have been on the Heisman list, but maybe next year is where he should be. If he comes back next year, we have no idea. I didn't even think about that. McConnell is eligible for the draft this offseason, so he could leave us. We don't know exactly what will happen, but dear God, I hope he comes back because we have Cedric Riley, the red shirt, but I don't know if he's 100% ready, but I know who's ready. Rubley, that man in the NFL. He's a legend. It does make me a little bit sad that when we had Kalen Harris, who was the best rated player the first year of our program, we just didn't really have the opportunities to get him the ball, whether it was our offense, whether it was our quarterback, and, you know, simply we just didn't have what we needed to get that guy the ball. But now with Rubley, the offense has progressed so much, we're in a much better spot to get him the ball. But look at Jason Barr, go up the middle, get a rushing touchdown. You'd love to see it. Now, we did a quick little simulation of the kickoff, like we always do for this series. They returned to 93 yards for a touchdown. Help me! So we're back out here with the ball, which I guess is kind of sort of good news, except for the fact that our special teams is like our defense. Horace, but look at this. What a run up the middle for Derwin. The spin move, we haven't seen that in a long time. I know that he'll probably never come out and say it, but I do think that Derwin was injured for a portion of the season and just didn't want to tell us because how he has been playing since then, it's night and day. Like, this is really the first week we've seen his speed and athleticism really come to play. And oh my God, can McConnell get a break? Thank God that's not rule to fumble. Donald got lit up pretty hard there. We're going to Derwin here in third and short. Oh, that was a read option. Mistakes were made. We're punting the football. This has not been the start we wanted for this game. We gave up a special teams touchdown. Their offense has been destroying us. Their quarterback is running all over us like his name is Tim Tebow. What are we doing? Now, wait a second. On that last play, their quarterback actually got injured. So their backup quarterback's coming in. We have no idea for how long, but now they're out. Their top quarterback and their top running back. And we're going to make that man fumble if we can. So we just got news that Smothers, who's been dominating us the entire game, is out with a strain pectoral, and he's out for two quarters. So we won't see him likely until the fourth quarter, if my math is correct. We're going to try to make sure we can do something better, and good God, we are not doing anything good on this play. What is happening? Trying to do a little bit better here again. We'll see how much they run versus pass with the back of quarterback in. We don't really know a lot about him, so we got to try to figure that out ASAP. Switching to a little bit of zone coverage here. I'm actually going to drop Moses. See what they got. Ooh, Moses comes over, but this dude still still farms his way for eight or nine yards. We need something big here. I need Walton not being all the way across the field from his guy right now. They're going for a play. We got a couple of guys, but still the backup quarterback gets three when they only needed two. They've been pretty run heavy since the backup quarterbacks come in, so we're going to try to take note of that a little bit. I mean, they are just finding lane after lane after lane. What are we doing? We are trying to get some pressure on this quarterback, man, but it is not happening. Got some guys on the edge. They go to the complete opposite side of the field, but we have two guys there to stop him after three. Watch as much as we can here in second and seven. They go with a pass. We haven't seen a ton of those today. They go to the halfback, and we just sat there and watched it happen. We need one of those stops ASAP here. Feels like another run's coming. We go up the middle, but we got some big fellas there to stop him for a loss of two. Thank God it's been a minute. We need the ball back as quick as humanly possible because we need to put points on the board. We do not need to be letting their backup quarterback find a way to keep this offense relevant. They go with the run here again. We've got guys ready for him for a loss of another one. You can happily play the pass on this play and know that that's pretty much what's coming. They go with the halfback screen though. We get a hit in the quarterback. God, I wish that was a fumble, but instead they're be kicking a field goal, which is okay in my book. So lying for the field goal here, I mean, it's pretty much straight on. I don't think a team like Nebraska is really going to have a chance to miss one of these. So we're just going to do our best to try to get up and block it. We tried, but it wasn't good. But still, the field goal was good. We tried, though. The good news is we're only down 10, and we have plenty of time left in this ball game. So we don't have to go anything crazy, nothing that's really chucking it down the field. Just put some points on the board in the best way we know possible, and that's getting the ball to our playmakers. We need to get our passing game to be a little bit more respected. The way we've been running it so far, they're not really respecting the passing game. And honestly... We need them to do that. Get in the hurry up going here, because again, I need that defense to be a little bit tired so we can see what we got here. Running back out of the backfield, but oh my God, number 11 came up like crazy to clear that one out. McConnell's still under 35 yards, or excuse me, under 50 yards passing on the afternoon. That's just, that's inexcusable in my opinion. We need that dude to be spreading the ball around and make sure our guys get open and get down the field. Keep in the hurry up offense going here. Connell clears him out of one side. He's going to keep him moving. He's going to cut up. I need a man to get out of bounds. He broke one tackle. The fumble felt like it was coming. All the time in the world here. Second and four. A little late on that one, but he does find Dawkins for 10 and probably a concussion. Almost over 50, or excuse me, over 50 yards now passing, which still feels incredibly weird. We're missing a lot of our guys because of the hurry up, so 
That's something we got to keep an eye on. Jordan Damon in the game. Don't see him getting a lot of receptions, but he picks up 17 yards there. Our receivers are gassed. They needed a breather, but the dude who plays two sides of the ball was ready. First and 10. Three minutes of some change left. McConnell again feeling it. He's going to stretch that one. Gets out of bounds smartly. And look, we'll take another first down without our quarterback getting hit at all. With how much we've been going in the passing game and running with our quarterback, I think it's time to go back to the running game and see what our running back's able to do here. Durham's been having a pretty good game so far, but they were ready and immediately stopping. Second and nine. Connell's rolling. He's got his guy, the tight end. And Jared Gold, who is in the end zone. He has been in the end zone magnet the second half of the season. We're going to cut our lead to three, assuming the extra point goes in. The offense did their job, and even more importantly, special teams did their job and did not give up a crazy play on that drive. So here we go with 234 left, Nebraska. Probably going to be relying a lot on the run. We get a big hit there by Jacoby Walters. Look, the best news for us is if Nebraska is going to be sort of one-dimensional here and has to run the football pretty much nonstop. That makes our defensive coverages a whole lot easier, except for the fact that we literally cannot cover anybody, and it blows my mind. Two minutes left here in the first half. Nebraska again. All they want to do is put points to the board, and we want to stop them from doing that ASAP. Eichenberg and company are going to go there, and Eichenberg stops them after two. Second down and eight again. This old cover two disguise has been working the wonders for us. Sitting on again, that quarterback's panicking. Jordan Damon is there. He doesn't even move. Is he falling asleep? Play the football, young man. The good news is we know that they're pretty much going to have to run the first. Excuse me, run a pass play here. So we can sit back and see what we can do here in third and eight. We go underneath. We're playing that perfectly. They have to punt the football. We have plenty of time to try to get some more points on the board. We got the ball. Yes, we're deep in our own territory, but we're 91 yards away from getting the lead right back in this game. We'll never let it go again. Connell ready to work some magic here. Goes underneath. Again, we don't need crazy yards. We'll take anything. Four to go. Connell still under 100 yards passing in the afternoon, which just feels unbelievably insane to me. No way. Linebacker's incredible. Now, we had to mess around and call the timeout because we accidentally selected a play that we didn't like, and well, here we are. Slightly panicking. Third down to six. Our guys are moving. We got a guy going down the field. It's Marvin Derwin. Derwin got some ankle moves. Derwin's going to keep that up, and Derwin is down with a 40 yard reception. Minute and three seconds left. We got two timeouts. We're coming right back at him here. McConnell runs back to the line, switches up here in shotgun. Connell feeling the pressure. We're getting rid of it. Not the move we should have did. Derwin getting behind the defense was incredible. We need more of that right now. Second and 10, under a minute left. Got a guy across the middle of the safety bit up. It's Romello Dawkins trying to flash the speed, and he's down inside what looks to be the 16-yard line. Love to see Romello get out there and get involved. He had a four-yard grab earlier in the drive. Now he comes up with a major one there. First and 10, McConnell. Sees Jason Barr out of the backfield. Barr's going to fight for it. He gets a 10-yard grab to make it first and goal. First and goal here. Let our guys regroup a little bit. Rolls one is close for Robert Roth. Get your IRA served up. Roth's going to get a six-yard touchdown grab, and now we have the lead with 23 seconds left going into halftime. 16 seconds and a dream. It looks like they're going to opt to go run the football this time instead, but we're still just paying attention because, good Lord, you never know what's going to happen. The running back cuts it up, breaks a couple of tackles, and dear God, he almost went to the house. They're lining up with a lot of guys deep. It was like maybe a halfback screen. I don't know, really know what he was going for, but we'll take the sack, and we're going to go into halftime in the lead. An early interception put us behind, but look, we've battled back defensively, offensively, and special teams because we gave up a touchdown earlier, and we had the lead by four. Now, coming out here in the second half, Nebraska had the football to start. They didn't really do anything on a three and out, so we're back here with the ball on offense, trying to add back to our little lead of four points. Second to five here, McConnell under center. Pretty rare. You don't see that a ton. You see him rolling this time. He's trying to get to the edge, and you know what? He's going to take those yards, and he almost gets the first. Lost by one. Two for four and third down conversions, and man, we desperately need to get a conversion right here. Not getting that would be a bit tough. Derwin's going to find the gap and push this forward. Look, he's not having a crazy game, but he's having a Marvin Derwin-style game right now. I mean, look, he's giving us over four and a half yards per carry, and I really can't ask much more of a running back than that right now. Be consistent, and I'm okay with it. A read option here. McConnell... If he got it to Dawkins, he might still be running, but he just couldn't get rid of the ball without risking a fumble. Connell not having a great running game either, about 37 yards on multiple attempts. Love to see more, but it's just not meant to be so far. Nebraska has had a very good game plan so far, and we cannot be mad at that. Connell's out here scrambling. He's got a guy, tries to throw it to him. He does get Dawkins, and Dawkins picks up 13. Way to stay alive on that. 
14 and 19 for McConnell, 191. After that interception, which was abysmal, he has battled back and made really smart choices with the football, and I'm happy about that. Jason Barr in the game. He's going to push forward. He gets about 10 yards himself. We got a quick breather in the last play, but he's right back in here. Ruby comes in motion, left hand side to try to set up a little bit of a block formation. And Derma's going to get that first down for not a, yet another time. None of our guys at the running back position or even our quarterback position have a crazy game by themselves, but together they have over 100 yards of rushing on the afternoon, and I'm here for that. Getting the ball to Jason Barr. Jason Barr's going to go forward off a little trick play and gets three. The big thing we're trying to do for the second half is give Nebraska a ton of different looks, and they know we have a ton of different weapons that could hurt them in a variety of different ways. Connell's going to go back a little bit here. You see him scrambling. He's feeling the immediate pressure. He's got to get rid of it because that was going to be a sack or potentially a fumble. They're down five yards to go. Dawkins has been really, really good in those short yardage sort of conversions so far. We might lean on him again. We do. It's a perfect route run, and he's outside at the 11. Love to see what Romello's doing right now. One of the most underrated receivers in Cascade Valley history. This has been a two and a half minute drive. Ten plays. We've been pushing the tempo and pushing a ton of plays at Nebraska to see how their defense holds up. And look at Derwin fight for it and get inside the five with a six yard run. Mark comes in. He gets a touchdown earlier in the game on the run. Second and four. He's going to try to get in the end zone again. And Jason Barber's in the end zone. This time he's going to get hit with a five yard run. Ends up being his second rushing touchdown of the afternoon. Yes, Derwin did a lot of the work, but don't discount what Barr did in that drive either. He was important. Nebraska again with their starting quarterback back in the game. We'll see what they can ultimately do. We couldn't really stop him at all in the first half, and I'm anxious to see what he sort of does here. A little pitch out here. Jacoby Walter tries to stop their running back. Sapp is going to get about eight yards on that carry regardless. Our big thing here is just finding a way to stop this quarterback. Smothers has been bane of our existence, and if he had been in the game the whole time, we don't know if this game would be the way that it is right now with us having an 11-point lead. A lot of dinking and dunking right now, but we all know the way that Smothers hurt us the most was on the ground. It wasn't really through the air in the first half. Moving a guy in motion. We're going to watch that. We're trying to get guys to the edge. We got Walton. Walton can't get to him. Smothers is still running, and he's going to keep his legs moving, and Smothers gets all the way down at the 35. Stop that man. Walters has six tackles, but good Lord, we got to find a way to stop this dude. We're going to say... Eichenberg is going to say a little bit of a quarterback spy here. They bring a guy over to the right-hand side, staying a shotgun. We got some guys there, though. Eichenberg did a split in that play and still got the tackle. Doing our guys to do here, second and 11. A little adjustment made there by Smothers. Play action, but we got Eichenberg, though, ready to go. I think he's got eight tackles on the game so far. Actually, I'm wrong. Eichenberg only has six tackles today, but it feels like he's been everywhere on the field. So it is what it is. Playing for the pass. Smothers, again, a small adjustment here. They go underneath. We got guys there in hole. Somehow gets burned, but still forces him out of bounds. Nebraska is going to line up for the kick because if they make this, this puts them only down eight points on the game, which again means a touchdown, a two point conversion, and they're good to go. This kick is going to be up. It's close. I think they said that one's no good. And if it's no good, that is a giant W for us right now. Okay, I thought it was no good, but it was apparently barely good by a yard or so. So they're right back in the game, only down eight with a minute 52 left in the third quarter. We got to find a way to get some more points back on that board ASAP. Look at Derwin. Says, excuse me. Your ankle's going to get broken today. Look at the young fella go out there and kill it. Kind of feel for Derwin a little bit because he doesn't have any touchdowns today. He's been running the ball nonstop. He's been super consistent. It's just, I don't know if that man got a concussion there or not, but he's had a good game despite the touchdowns. Second down, 10 yards to go. Rudy's going to come in motion here to the left-hand side. Go back to the right. He's wide open after that little motion there. And Rubley's going to, I thought he was going to keep it moving. 15 big yards for the tight end. That was the perfect time to call that play. I believe they were sitting in a little bit of zone, so no one had Rubley coming out of that backfield. Back here with Derwin. Tries to hit him with the juke move, but 47 was ready for it and then some. Third quarter's winding down a little bit here. We're getting back in their scoring territory. I love seeing what we got from our team, and McConnell's going to pick up another first down again. This hasn't been one of those like overwhelmingly dominant performances from us from either the passing game or the running game. It's just been slow, methodical sort of way for us to find what works and what doesn't. And that play definitely did not. Second and 12 to go. Derwin McConnell, two guys ready to get things going again. The run game has been looking beautiful. McConnell again, not taking any risks here. We'll take the third and inches. We believe we can get our offensive line to push for at least a yard. Done really well on third downs, four for six. I believe we can get another one right here. Derwin's the guy we're going to. Derwin's going to find some room, and Derwin is out on the open field for another big 11-yard rush. He's getting close to 100 on the afternoon, and it doesn't even feel like it. The biggest thing we found in today's game is that Nebraska is really struggling against the run, and if they are, we're going to keep trying to abuse that a little bit. Yes, they've had a couple of stops here and there, but look at what Derwin, Barr, and McConnell have done. They're pushing them back. First and goal. 
three yard line you know what time it is little halfback toss here bars in the game again if he scores it'll be his third rushing touchdown and he gets in and i feel bad for our guy Durin. he's just been gassed every single time that we get down there and bars benefiting if you look at just sort of the box score you're not going to say that Derwin really has been the mvp of the game but he absolutely has the key third down conversions the big rushes that has set us up i mean production after production it has really been Derwin has been the driving force of today's game i mean let's not forget about that incredible reception he had as well when the offense was struggling i mean Derwin comes up with a major play that honestly puts in a really good drive to go down and score third down seven yards to go feels like a pass play coming up watching their underneath guys Smothers always going to get smothered a sack for a loss of seven. That is something you cannot do right there. And Bobby Edwards, his second sack of the game, the true freshman stepping up big today. With the game being where it is right now, with us having the ball where we do, we're absolutely going to try to chew a little bit of the game clock right now. Derwin getting the ball on a nice little counter run. Broken ankle or two and picks up eight. Nebraska's run defense, despite how well their overall defense is, their run defense has been pretty terrible today. But they do get a big stop here to make a third and short. We are definitely chewing the clock a little bit. A field goal from here is possible, but I don't want to end up risking it. I want to make sure we get this first down. We're going to see Dermot go up the middle. A good joke move again. That puts him over 100 yards on the afternoon. It has been a minute since we felt good about saying that for him. Nebraska still has all their timeouts right now, but you know that time is not on their side as we're trying to chew as much as we possibly can right now. Bar trying to get to the edge, goes for a spin move, but they were sitting on that the entire time. It's wild. The bar is nine rushes for 29 yards and three touchdowns. It's been a crazy afternoon for him. Going right here to Derwin, though. He's done pretty well in the passing game. He's going to try to turn up a little bit. Stays in bounds and picks up enough to make it 35. McConnell, relatively quiet game for him. 226 through the air. We're going to see what he has here. Possible clear out play. See McConnell roll. See him step up. McConnell didn't want to go out of bounds, but it just felt like the move that he had to make. But still, we're in a good spot. And honestly, I don't hate him going out of bounds as much right now because look, we got two minutes left. We're inside the 10 and we're in a fantastic area to cook right now. Derwin trying to get to the edge. He cuts up a little bit and look at the young fella just yearning to get into the end zone. On the four yard line, Derwin's in. Nebraska has used their first time out. We get a pitch out here to Derwin. Derwin cuts up. He's going to get hit, but he is finally in the end zone. We've had so many rushing touchdowns today, but it is about time that Marvin Derwin, with over 160 yards total offense, is finally one to get in the end zone for himself. Nebraska kind of needs a miracle right now. They've already used one timeout. They have to be pretty pass happy right now, which they haven't really had a lot of success in. They've been mostly a run heavy team. And a lot of their passes have been these sort of short underneath passes, which a little bit of success, but nothing major. Their starting QB has only passed for 59 yards today. Part of that being that he was injured for a good majority of it, but still nothing that was going to make us go crazy or let them throw anything underneath they want. You want an underneath pass? You can have it right now. Time is not on their side and all these underneath passes are just going to burn some clock and help us out big time in this game they go across the middle again Ray Walton can't get the tackle but a couple of guys do come across the middle of stopping still playing for the mid here smothers again he's had a pretty good drive so far can't be mad at what he's done they clear us out Eichenberg gets caught up a little bit and Walton's gonna pick him up but again a minute 17 left honestly they should have been passing like this the entire game if they had this kind of passing attack and passing plays ready granted we're running pretty conservative schemes right now they should have been doing this the whole time Reeves is ready with a 22 point lead a minute four left smothers and company just trying to get into the end zone here they go underneath the gamble Walters is ready oddly enough they've thrown one incomplete pass with their starting quarterback today he's 12 of 13 for again not a ton of yards but I mean the man's 12 of 13 you can't be but so mad the clock is winding they're just ultimately trying to get you know a pity touchdown right now which if they get it, it is what it is but I don't want them to have it oh John Hall has the second most interceptions in the season. And I just, I wonder how it happened. I do. They're going to do a review on the play. I'm pretty sure he got not one, not two, but literally three feet down on this one. We'll see if he got a toe drag. Yeah, he got the toe drag 100%. Gets the toe down a second time. So yeah, he had technically three feet down. They're good. Now, Nebraska's going to go for two because, bless their hearts, they're not going to give up. Smothers is there. They go with a little bit of an option play, and they don't get it, which... Pretty much kills the game for him. We're gonna go for an onside kick here, but as soon as we touch this football, we're gonna catch it, we're gonna get down, and we're gonna walk out of here with a W in hostile territory. Jared Gold got it. Big fella. I'm here for it. So we're gonna walk out of here with a much needed W. Hostile territory. Hostile team. It don't matter. Jason Barr gets the player of the game despite only having having less than 50 yards on the afternoon, but still three touchdowns were huge. I think though, in my book, 
It's Marvin Derwin, because that dude had a game that we haven't seen in a long time. He capped the snaps, McConnell, 17 to 23, 226, two touchdowns, one pick. If you give her to the interception, he had a very precise, very, very good game, in my opinion. On the ground, Derwin, 24 for 147. He was an absolute monster today. The redshirt senior came to play, and I'm proud of him. McConnell goes 11 for 66. Jason Barr goes 9 for 29. Again, the three touchdowns for Barr, the one for Derwin. Disparity probably should have been shifted the other way, but I'll take production any way we get it. In the air, Romello Dawkins led us today 5 for 73. No touchdowns for him. Derwin had a couple with 52, so about 200 yards total offense for him. Barr had a couple. We see Robert Rothy, excuse me, the first receiving touchdown I think we had today. And we followed up with Jared Gold, or maybe it was the other way, but still. Not a lot to love in the passing and receiving game, but again, two touchdowns, four on the ground. I'm good with it. On defense, Jacoby Walters was everywhere. He doesn't get the pride and, you know, the flowers that he probably should, but eight tackles for him. And he's playing beside Eichenberg is a W. Eichenberg by himself had six three of those being for loss. He was a monster in the run game today. Uh, from a sack perspective, there was one guy that got out of the quarterback and it was Bobby Edwards. Look, some people didn't want me to get him because he's an 80 overall who had sort of a minus one on his scouting and they thought maybe he's gonna be a bust, but this dude has been anything but that. Interception wise, they didn't really throw a ton of passes till the end and we couldn't cover a wet blanket. So it is what it is on that side. But overall, I am happy with how the defense played. Yes, we struggled a little bit early, gave up a few more points than I wanted, but he went out there and did our thing. Tough game early, and I can't help but wonder if Smothers didn't get hurt, would this game have went the other way? Should the score have been the other way? And I don't know what the voters are going to say old to me on the poll, but I feel like that might hurt us a little bit. But still, we went out there and did what we had to do to win the game. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't beautiful. It definitely wasn't out there being ugly. Our team got the dub. We should advance maybe another spot or two in the polls, and getting in the top 15 is really the micro goal we have right now. Then it's all to try to win our conference championship, which I think be huge another week another dub cascade valley rides again be safe be smart tell someone you love them i'll catch you guys on the next one